Edmonton Strathcona. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And Mr. Speaker, I too am pleased to stand in this House today in support of Motion 448 for the establishment of a permanent memorial for those who served in Afghanistan. And I wish to credit the member from Palliser for recommending that we memorialize not only those who gave their lives, but also those who were injured and those who aided in the mission. One subtle change, uh, Mr. Speaker, it may be more appropriate to speak of commemorating, not necessarily memorializing, as I understand uh, the member wishes to thank all who served, not simply those who gave their lives. I, along with my colleagues and all Canadians, am grateful for the contribution that the men and women who serve in the Canadian Armed Forces provide to this country. And it's only right that these brave individuals be honoured. It is right that we as Canadians mark our gratitude. Two members of my immediate family served in the two world wars. My father served in the Air Force during World War II, and my great uncle lost his life during World War I. I was raised with the tales of war and the sacrifices made. Many spoke of valor and many had sadder tales and many of my father's generation chose simply not to talk about the war. And so it left me with a very quiet understanding of the sacrifices made. I had the honor of accompanying the former Minister of Defence to the repatriation of a fallen soldier brought home to his family. The experience is one that brings home the sacrifices of war and will remain with me forever. I am working with the forces, business members, and historic groups to re-establish the cenotaph in my own riding of Edmonton Strathcona to enable the regiment and community to assemble for commemoration ceremonies. I know that all communi communities across Canada have great respect for our armed forces, and I think that it's a beautiful gesture that the people in my community want to come together and to remember and help people to come together. And so it's indeed a beautiful gesture that we're not only going to uh, commemorate those who gave their lives in World War I and II, but we are going to also honour those who are serving today. The timing of this motion is significant with the permanent withdrawal of troops after over a decade of Canadian participation in the Afghan conflict. The end of this mission will be a time to reflect on the contributions made by Canada to improving the lives of the Afghan people, the strides we had taken in contributing to training efforts, and the work accomplished alongside our NATO allies. The proposed memorial offers at least one, at least one concrete means to thank these men and women and their families, and to serve as a reminder, as the member has spoken earlier this evening, of the need to strengthen our resolve to support those who have returned home with special needs, for example, those with injuries, uh, either physical or mental, and a reminder to us that we always have to be there for our veterans in their time of need, and that a responsibility is that if they risk their lives overseas, we will be here for them when they come home, and we will care for, the, for uh, the soldiers and their families. Most importantly, Mr. Speaker, it's a time to honour the 158 Canadian soldiers who lost their lives. I wish particularly to mark the contributions of the soldiers from the Edmonton Garrison. The Garrison is home to 5,000 military personnel and their families. CFB Edmonton began deploying soldiers at the commencement of the mission in Afghanistan with 750 troops from the 3rd Battalion of Princess Patricia's Canadian Light Infantry, deploying to Afghanistan in January of 2002. From then to now, CFB Edmonton has been a major contributor to Canada's involvement. 42 of the Canadian soldiers, or almost one-third of those who lost their lives in the mission, were from CFB Edmonton. This past summer, soldiers left Edmonton for Afghanistan to serve in the final stages of the Operation Attention Training Mission. While the combat role of the Canadian military ended some time ago, the contribution of these soldiers continues in a dangerous setting, far from family and home. Just as they are in the minds of loved ones who are missing them while they're away, our men and women in uniform must remain in the minds of Canadians after their return. A monument is certainly one way that we, as a country, can, make, can show our soldiers in a very tangible way their contribution will never be forgotten. Mr. Speaker, the proposal for a special monument for Canadians serving in Afghanistan is laudable. By coincidence, last fall, I had the fortune of meeting in Edmonton the Canadian artist who had designed a proposed memorial to honour Afghan veterans. 
A model of that particular sculpture was displayed on the hill this past year. The artist actually inquired of me what happened to the previous uh, apparent support for the completion and dedication of this particular memorial. The Canadian monument once installed at Kandahar Airfield is now touring the country. We were honoured, Mr. Speaker, with a view of the memorial here on the hill just before Christmas. I was advised that the intent is to permanently install this memorial in the capital region. It's not clear from the motion whether this is the member's intent or if he's suggesting a second form of memorial. Either way, um, we do a need to establish a permanent memorial. I feel obliged to raise a concern, Mr. Speaker, that I'm also hearing from veterans that no similar initiative has been taken for the Canadian soldiers deployed elsewhere who also lost their lives, for example, on the Bosnian mission. And I encourage the members in the House to give careful thought to that request from our veterans. It's high time that we come together as a country to recognize more broadly the contributions of Canadian forces and the burdens that they and their families continue to bear. I was struck by the documentary aired on CPAC about a number of volunteer initiatives in this country to support Canadian veterans who are disabled and have become homeless and some long suffering from PTSD type symptoms. More must be done to honour their service. We must honour our long standing sacred obligation to care for our injured veterans. And as the member uh, from across the floor mentioned this evening, yes, we need to build a permanent monument, but we also must assume the responsibility to ensure that those who return home who are injured or are suffering from some form of mental distress or having, uh, are suffering from the cultural shock of returning to the wealth of Canada from uh, a situation in a, a, a country uh, uh, such as Afghanistan, need our support to adjust back into Canadian society. So, Mr. Speaker, we must all reflect on this proposed memorial and dedicate ourselves to ensuring not only the expenditures on the phys physical monuments to those who have served, but also to ensure that all veterans are granted the assistance and care they deserve for the sacrifices they have made on our behalf. And in closing, Mr. Speaker, I'd like to add that I had the privilege of, of serving over a five-year period in Bangladesh through a Canadian aid project. And I had the opportunity to travel to Chittagong. And for those of you who are unaware, Chittagong borders between Bangla Bangladesh and Burma. And uh, there is a beautiful cemetery uh, that is maintained uh, by the Bangladeshi, where buried our young Canadian and British soldiers. And it was very heartrending to go uh, through that cemetery and to see uh, um, all of the young uh, Canadians who had given their life. But what was most heartrending is to see the dedication of the Bangladeshi people um, to honour the service that our Canadian forces gave for, for their protection and the fact that that cemetery is being so beautifully maintained. I just recently met with some veterans in Edmonton and they called upon um, myself and to speak to my colleagues here to make sure that the same kind of initiatives as Bangladesh and we're seeing in Europe, we make sure that we also maintain uh, uh, the burial sites of our veterans who returned home and I look forward to taking up that uh, matter. But in closing, uh, I commend the member for bringing forward the motion and uh, uh, look forward to supporting this going forward. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.